There we go. Happy Look, birthday, can you read that? Birthday. Eileen yes. Kilgore Henderson was born on April 10th, 1921. Wow. Wow. Yes. yes, that's impressive. Eileen was born in Cedar Cove, Alabama, which is a, a, an old mining camp. It doesn't really exist anymore. It's a, it's a name on a map. It's uh, between here and Mercedes Benz. She, at a, at a young age, she became a prolific diarist and a keeper of journals. Her first job, her first job was, was working at a dime store. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. In World War II, she's a veteran. She was a uniformed veteran of the United States Army. She's, she's a former WAC and she worked servicing aircraft engines, rebuilding aircraft engines. She became a school teacher. She moved to Big Bend National Park she married a park ranger. And after that, she lived all over the United States. She's a very long-term member of Twig. Uh, she published her first novel, or first book after the age of 70. Now let's, 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 uh, let's take a look here. I have got to end screen sharing. Now, I want to show some of Aline's books. She's a prolific award winner. Here's a book, Hard Times for Jake Smith. It won the Alabama Library Association Award. Here's another book she wrote, The Treasure of Panther Peak, New York Public Library, Best Books for Teenagers. Oh. Another book she wrote, The Monkey Puzzle, the, the Monkey Thief. It also won a New York Library Award, Best Books for Teenagers. This book, The Summer of the Bone Pile Monster, won the Milkweed Prize for children's literature. Another book won The Horses of Lost Valley, won the Purple Dragonfly Award. She's also, well, let me mention this book first. This is one of my personal favorites, it's Tenderfoot Teacher. It's an edited collection of her letters home from when she was a, a, a school teacher in Big Bend National Park down in Texas. It's probably the most isolated part of the continental United States. This is one of my personal favorites. Uh, I don't have a copy of Stateside Soldier uh, it's her experiences as a whack in World War II. That's another one of my personal favorites. We loaned it out and somebody never gave it back. Well, people do that. Uh, she's also in this, in, in this anthology of Appalachian folk tales. She has two nice folk tales in there. And she's also represented in Twig's publication, Tuscaloosa Story. I don't have all of her books today. She also wrote an excellent biography on Eugene Allen Smith, state geologist of Alabama. And I, I, that's, that's really, Aline's career is continuing. She's still continuing to write, which is remarkable. She's a shining example for all of us and for all writers and people everywhere. We Let me make her. sure she heard that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I said she's, she's a shining example for all of us and all writers everywhere. You are a shining example for them and for all writers everywhere. Yes, Just you are. Slow getting about it. 74 is too old to be published in your first book. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. You're never too old. Nobody, nobody's ever too old to do that thing, to, to, to do that. Well, Eileen... Happy birthday, and we love you. Okay, now. Happy birthday, Ellie. Happy Yay. birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Now, Beth, Beth has a presentation to make. Beth. Hi, Eileen. First, I'd like to say you are such an inspiration to me and everyone in this group and others. I'm sure. I'd like to present a donation 
to the public library for their middle school grade wish list in honor of you for $500. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, all was given in donation through our members. The, the members of TWIG are donating here $500 to the library for its middle grade wish list. I'm so thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I wish. A book is a powerful thing. And telling where this will reverberate in the world. Thank you. You're quite welcome. And I think that middle schoolers are an age group that really needs inspiration to read. Yes, they do. All right, at this point, I wanted to open the floor up and for each person individually to say something to Eileen. So go ahead, Carol, I'll let you go first. Okay. Eileen, you are my mentor in so many ways. Um, I've seen you when you've had hard times and you just keep on trucking. You're an amazing leader and I love your curiosity. I think your curiosity is just, just the most beautiful thing because you always are curious about everybody you know. You want to know their stories. Thank you for being who you are. She loves your curiosity. You are an inspiration. In hard times, you just keep going. If you get a rejection, you send it out again. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, a writer cannot afford to have an ego. We uh, uh, deal with the editors, and when an editor writes and says, we don't publish stuff like this, study your market, and you have studied the market, but mishaps happen, but you keep going, big buddy, keep going. Eileen, thank you so much for pushing me with my book now. Every time you would come to our meetings at the library, you would ask me, when is that book going to be finished? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, when it was finished, you were very proud that I had completed that book, which I'd been working on and off and procrastinating. Carolyn Rhodes appreciates how you kept pushing her to get her book done. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I have certainly appreciated our group, our guild. We are old, we started. Uh, Margaret Searcy was one of our founding members and certainly I remember on my 80th birthday, Margaret and Joe took all the guild to uh, the restaurant in Northport. The Globe? The Globe, right. Oh, and uh, uh, it, time does pass. Uh, but I'll tell you some words of wisdom from Margaret Searcy. I was complaining about eating whipped cream. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Margaret <laughs> smiled and her gift away. Mm -hmm. Eat whipped cream, mm. but air. So that's been my philosophy. Whipped cream is nothing but air. So I had it for breakfast this morning. Krista? <laughs> 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 no. May I speak? Thank you. Eileen, I'm so happy to be here and be with this guild of which I was a member for about eight, eight or nine years before I left for, for uh, uh, Texas again. And you were really not only my, insp yeah, my inspiration, number one, and also a mentor in many ways, uh, a mentor not so much for the language, but for the staying power and for having, having something to say after the age of 75. I thought that was the most marvelous thing that, that uh, I could imagine. 
uh, being my and and of course even though I'm a little younger than you are, but I mean, you always called me child. And, I, and that gave me a tickle because I was about 60 when I joined. So <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you for letting me be here and see Eileen still in, in, in a way that I, I mean, you cannot imagine a hundred year old person looking. So thank you Eileen for being here and letting us celebrate you. Krista, thanks you for being here, letting us all of everyone celebrate with you. You have been a, an inspiration, a mentor, and you have let her, you gave her the belief that uh, after the age of 75, you could still contribute, you could still uh, accomplish things. Well, uh appreciate this, thank you. But I did not do it all by myself. And I thank all those who have helped and encouraged me <laughs> and with critical, uh, critical comments as well as compliments. Thank you. Well, I want to speak as one of the youngest members here at, at 72 <laughs> years old. <laughs> And uh, I just published, had my first book published at 71. So I have a long way to go to catch up with you. In fact, I don't ever intend, intend to catch up with you. But uh, you've been an inspiration. And I'm sorry that I just joined this uh, about a year ago. So uh, I don't didn't really get to know you, but you're quite an inspiration. John Cooper says you have also been an inspiration. Uh, his first book was just published and he's 71, so he has a ways to go to, <laughs> to catch up. Uh, and I saw a comment on there by someone who had enjoyed the Dime Store book. I didn't catch uh, who that was. Was it Lanessa? No, uh, no, I think it Lori. was Lori. Oh, Lori. 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 Yes, yes. Lori really enjoyed the dime store book. Tuscaloosa as it was in the 30s. Hmm. Well, uh, Jennifer, how about you and Don? You have some comments? Yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell you uh, something. I'm uh, going to be 80 at my next birthday, so uh, just a child by comparison, <laughs> but, but my friends, several of my friends who are just about my age, ask me from time to time, why do I write things now when I don't have to anymore? <laughs> why, wh why do I keep on, you know, uh, uh, reviewing books or interviewing authors or writing my own things when I have a pension and I don't have to mess with that anymore and no one is making me? And I have a lot of trouble explaining to them why I keep on doing it. But there are 14 people here who all know why we keep on doing it. We do it because we like it. We do it because we want to get better at it. We do it in a sense because we have to, because it kind of become who we are. And there's probably not a more understanding group for that sentiment that you could find anywhere. Happy birthday, Elaine. I'm looking forward to reading the next one. Don is looking forward to reading your next one. So you have to get busy and uh, make sure there's a next one. Uh, people uh, ask him why when he's soon going to be 80 and he doesn't have to write, why does he keep writing? And mm -hmm. all of you and all the group will understand you, you, you just uh, have to writing. If you are a writer, you've got to write. You are impelled to write. Yes. And, and I wanted to say, Eileen, I love the way you show that anybody's life can be the material for a book. That somebody might think that growing up in Brookwood, Alabama, their life wouldn't matter. But you've shown that, that a life in a small community is worthy of writing about. 
you have Jennifer, Jennifer Horn says you have shown that anyone's life can be worth writing about that can you say that again yeah just that that you you don't have to grow up in in um some exotic or famous place that you can find the material to write about your life anywhere in Brooklyn, yes. Alabama, anywhere. That is important material for yes. memoir and literature. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that uh, you can get your material for memoir and literature from anywhere, growing up in a small community where you might think my life couldn't matter. No one would care, but you can make it. And worthwhile. everyone is different. Each life is different. That's the amazing thing. Hmm. And I saw uh, Sharmila had a comment there. May you, uh, Sharmila from India, may you inspire us many more years. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sharmila. Laura Hunter joined us. Laura? Jamie, do you want to have something? Laura Hunter, you want to make a comment or two? Yes. I don't know if you remember this or not, Alain, but I owe you so much. You were instrumental in getting my first story published at um, Livingston Press in the first edition of Bell's Letters. And I want to thank you again for that and wish you a happy birthday and many more. Laura Hunter remembers that you were instrumental in helping her get her first book published at Livingston Press and uh, first and Bell's Letters. Uh, and she wants to wish you a happy birthday and many oh, more. Thank you. Thank you. Rick, did you have Rick? Did you have some comments? Yes, I first met you through the library, and even before I realized you were an author, you made an impact just with how supportive and helpful you were to everyone who encountered you, worked with you. Uh, you were active with it was the guild at that point, and just through the years, people who come through the library wanting to get started with writing or having projects where they're doing that sort of work, they've all been very impressed and appreciative of the help that you've given them. And that's just, it's always struck me that you're so helpful and, and have had that impact. So again, we're, we're always pleased that you've been a part of the library and we'll take the gift and you know, extend the impact even further. So thank you and happy birthday. Richard from the library, before even you were an author, he was impressed with how you uh, uh, encouraged and uh, uh, helped people there at the library. Uh, you were a positive force uh, encouraging them. Thank you. Is, is, is there anyone else that, that has a um, Lanessa? Yes. Um, Eileen, I just want to say thank you. When I came to TWIG, um, I think I was about 34, and um, I was feeling pretty down about writing and deciding whether or not I should even get back into it after some really bad experiences. And when I met you, I marveled at how much life was left to share and how every single year and day can offer something to write about and that it doesn't, age is nothing. Age is nothing and you're, you're timeless. So happy birthday and thank you. Thank you, thank you. Very good. And your audio came through very clear on that one. So I believe she could understand it all. Good. How you, uh, the in, inspiration when she came to Twig that, and was discouraged. <laughs> uh, is, any, is anyone else? 
I just wanted to say that um, I knew about Twig because of you, Eileen, and um, your uh, niece, um, Alicia Curry, invited me um, through you to Twig, and I'm just so grateful for this group, and happy birthday. Marsha Irwin uh, there, uh, remembering when she first came to Twig that she knew about it through you. Yes, we yes. need writers. We do. We need each other. Yes, we do. Yes, and Eileen, I want to tell you something that's just fun for you to know. This last week alone, no, the last two weeks, excuse me, alone, we've had three or well, three books published by different people and one the week before that. And then we've had one, two people um, writing columns and we've had a blog um, that's gone, I think, nationally and internationally. So we have people just doing all sorts of things um, that have been so successful. We're averaging one or two publications every two weeks now with all of our members. We have 50 members and um, we're staying really busy. Yes, we are. We're, we're so, very, very productive. So, we have 50 members. My goodness. With a lot of publications, uh, one or two every couple of weeks, three books recently, two columns, uh, regular columns and a blog. Wonderful, wonderful. We all have three, we all have three new books to read this week. So, oh no, four actually, a short story went out too as well that's on Kindle. So it's three, three novels and a short story just in two weeks time. Yes, mm. that's, that's marvelous, marvelous. Yeah, it's exciting. It's, it's wonderful. These are good times. These are good times and we need to keep them going. And we need you to come. <laughs> come <Yeah>. back. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your 101st birthday can be in person. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll all be together for 101. Uh -huh. Looking okay. Well, are there, any, are there any other comments? Anyone else have anything to say? Well, Eileen... Uh, Eileen, it's, it's been wonderful seeing you today. Uh, again, happy birthday, and we love you, and many more years, and we hope to see you again soon. And Rick, thank you so much for making the time yes, to be you. here today on behalf of the library. That's so sweet yes. of you to make time for us. I appreciate right. it. Oh, oh, I have one more thing I wanted to say. Eileen, there's another presentation that another ceremony we're actually putting together. Um, we've been coordinating it with the library. It will be on the YouTube, um, their YouTube as well. And it is going to be um, coming up this month. What it is, is 10 or 11 or 12 of us in Twig are going to be reading your works five minutes out of each present, out of each book. And we'll be recording it. Um, and the library will put it on their YouTube. So we will be presenting that within the next month. They're also going to do a reading of a dozen members reading five minutes each from their favorite passages. And that will be preserved for posterity on the <laughs> library YouTube channel. <laughs> We're set to go. So that'll be sometime this month. Yes, we are. Excellent. Well, this has been uh, a very, very good. And to see so many uh, familiar people and to also see new people that both those are wonderful. And I am so thankful I can still make out some of you. And uh, I, I, I'm just grateful to God and to all my friends and especially my family for helping me get through this hundredth, <laughs> hundredth <laughs> obstacle. What now? We will see. One more book, two more books. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. We'll see. Keep it going. <laughs> Keep it going. Okay. Thank you, Eileen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you.
ever so much. Well, that concludes uh, that concludes this part of the meeting, everyone.